been given. So my uh, exhortation this morning is based on the topic of choices. And what Brother Lucas just read to us, uh, if you could remember, it's all about uh, three things that I would share with you this morning. But also I think when we become aware that salvation is truly an individual matter, and also it's a personal matter. And that also tells us it has to do with choices. And that is right choices, because we choose whether we want to be saved, we choose whether we want to serve God or serve the world. We can choose salvation and be in the kingdom of God by his grace, or we can continue in the ways of the world and die going to hell that is the grave forever. And there's a, there's a verse that I would like to share. And when Moses was talking to the children of Israel, and also I believe this rings the same thing to us. And this is the words that Moses or God says to the children of Israel. Today, I am giving you a choice. You can choose life and success or death and disaster. Now that, brothers and sisters, is what God is telling us today, which means we do have choices. We can make a choice. And by studying the word of God and looking at this, but also there's another verse or another quotation that I found from a lady called Catherine Postfire. And this is what she says, which I found very strong and powerful. And she says that in life, it is all about choices we make and how the direction of our lives comes down to the choices we choose. And I think that is very true, that we, our direction in life, it comes down to the choices we have chosen. And if you think of what, 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 what the Lord God was saying, or what Jesus Christ was saying in, 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 in Matthew, it is all about choices and which, which direction of life one chooses. You can choose the narrow, or you can choose the wide. And I think this is what uh, I'd like to share with you this morning. Now, if you remember, uh, the, in Matthew chapter seven, it's actually a continuation of the Sermon on the Mount. And we just read those verses uh, from verse 13 or 12 to 28. And if you think about it, brothers and sisters, I personally want to believe that what Jesus Christ was talking about in Matthew chapter 13, or 7, verse 12 to 28, it's the Sermon on the Mount. But I think in this particular, the last few verses we read, it was a sermon on choices. Because in those few verses we read, you read about two gates, two roads, two trees, and two houses. And in all that, it was a matter of choices. And I just want to again go back to those verses. In verse 13 and 14, it reads, go in through the narrow gate that leads to gate to destruction is wide and the road that leads there is easy to follow. A lot of people go through that gate, but the gate to life is very narrow. The road that leads there is so hard to follow that only a few find it. So the gate to destruction is wide and the road that leads there is easy to follow. And I think Jesus here is painting a picture. And this picture is about two gates or two roads. In fact, it's two gates and two roads. And so one can choose the narrow gate or the wide gate. And, and, and I think this is all about those choices. Do we choose the narrow gate or do we choose the wide gate? Do we choose that road that leads to the narrow gate or do we choose the road that leads to the wide gate? And it's all about our choices. And Jesus is painting this picture 
about these two gates and these two roads so that we can make that choice. And for me, the narrow gate, it defines our faith. It defines our lifestyle. And it also defines Jesus Christ. See, talking about our faith, what that narrow gate defines, our faith, and as Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 8 to 9 reads, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this, this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. And I think it is because of the faith that we have that God has given us this gift. And it's not about our works, but when we make that choice to follow Christ, this is what God offers us. And the same brothers and sisters about our lifestyle. See the narrow gate, it defines our lifestyle. Does our lifestyle define which gate we have chosen? And do we, when we look at our lifestyle, do we live for today or do we live for the kingdom? Do we follow what the world asks of us? Talking about choices, I mean, most of us as parents, do we not make choices for our kids and sometimes forget that they are now grown ups, they can make their own choices. And maybe we make choices for our brothers and sisters, forgetting that that salvation is an individual thing. So Christ says in John chapter, four, ch chapter 10, verse 9, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They'll come in and go out and find pasture. So when we choose the narrow gate, not only are we choosing that faith that saves us, not only are we choosing a lifestyle that only serves God, not self, we are also choosing Jesus Christ. See, life in Christ is not about indulging the flesh, but it, it is about resisting and denying the flesh. See, the world tells us you deserve it. The world tells us that we should live to please ourselves. But we know that when we are in Christ, when we've chosen that road that leads to that narrow gate, it is about serving the Lord, not self. So I, I believe that, you know, brothers and sisters, we, we are told that we have to, you know, you need, you, need, you need to please yourself. You deserve it. I mean, when you work so hard, I think the world tells us you deserve a break. You deserve to go on holiday. You deserve to have that big house. You deserve to have that fancy car. You deserve to have that college degree. You, have, you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. There is nothing wrong in having all that. But at the, end of the day, at the end of the day, who are we serving? Are we serving the world or are we choosing to serve the Lord? So the two gates, the two roads, and I think I'm, uh, I'm very much a fan of looking at uh, the discussing about the gate because some time back, um, part of my life now where I'm doing my own freelancing, is to do some coaching. And, and I was looking at the idea of a gate and I thought about it uh, that, you know, if you look at what a gate does, I mean, if we all have gates at our houses, the gate opens up and closes. And what a gate symbolizes is actually a place of a decision. It's a place of control. With a gate, you have a control, whether you allow something or you don't allow something. With the gate, you have a control to let something in or to let something out. And it's all about a decision. It's all about choices. And if you look right back in the Old Testament, 
a city, the city gate was a place of decision making. It was a place where choices were made on how to run the city. The elders of the city will sit at the city gate. The widows will come to be served at the city gate. Children that are disobedient will be brought to the city gate to be disciplined. And I think when Christ says, I'm the gate, Christ is saying, this is where you need to be. If you make the right choice and you choose the right place, then you will have that hope of salvation. And I think the same with us, brothers and sisters, that we do have that decision when we are at the gate. Do we allow the world to teach us how to live or do we allow Christ to teach us how to live? And it's all about choices. And the second part of the two things we read, it was about two roads, two gates, the two trees, and the two trees, it was about the one that bears fruits and the one that doesn't bear fruit. And I, with time, I'm not gonna cover the two trees, but I'm gonna jump straight to the two houses. And the two houses that we read about, uh, I'm just gonna put the verses again up there. And it's seven, Matthew chapter seven, verse 24 to 27. It says, anyone who hears and obeys these teachings of mine is like a wise person who built a house on solid rock. Rain poured down, rivers flooded, and winds blew against that house. But it did not fall because it was built on solid rock. Anyone who hears my teachings and doesn't obey them is like a foolish person who built a house on sand. The rain poured down, the rivers flooded, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Finally, it fell with a crash. Now, if you think about it, brothers and sisters, the last verse there, it says, finally, it fell with a crash. And I also want to think that the structure of the house could be the same. Both houses had the same structure, but the foundation on which it was built on was not the same. See, what Christ is saying here, anyone who hears and obeys these teachings of mine is like a wise person. So he gives two examples again of a wise person and a person and a foolish person. They both built houses but the houses were built on different structure or different foundation rather. And both men heard the word, but one chose to apply it into practice and the other chose not to apply it. And the same with us today, the same with us in our life in Christ. You know, we can read the Bible every day. We can come to the breaking of bread like what we've done today. Memorize verses of the Bible, attend uh, Bible schools, you know, attend Wednesday classes, attend women classes, sisters classes, all those things. But if we do not apply the word in our lives, we won't have stability. And the winds and the storms of this life will flood and wash away the very same word that we have heard for so long. And you remember, it says that finally it fell with a crash. And I think that house, well, it didn't fall on this very same day that the wind and the storms and, and, and the, the rains poured down, but it took time gradually. It fell with a crash. And I think the same could happen with us, that when the winds, everything happens and we start getting beaten about by the wind and by the rains, we too, can fall and crash. And I think what also what is very clear here, what Paul, what, what, what be very careful what we listen out there. And we gotta be very careful what we put into practice. Because when we fall in a crash or when we do fail, it might be unfortunate because this is what Christ says, where he says, I never knew you. 
away from me, you evil doers. So applying the full intent of God's word brings stability to our lives. We become like that house that was built on solid rock. And then if I may read to you again a verse in James chapter 1, verse 22 to 24 from the Message Bible, it reads, don't fool yourselves into thinking that you are a listener when you, you are anything but. Letting the word of God in one ear and out the other. Act on what you hear. Those who hear and don't act are like those who glance in the mirror, walk away, and two minutes later have no idea who they are and what they look like. And I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but the current situation that we are faced with, you know, we are in, still in lockdown level uh, at three or advanced level three. We're still suffering from this pandemic. pandemic. And those of you, I'm sure that have been following uh, the finance minister's midterm budget, it just throws us into further despair. You know, we're reading of people losing jobs. I personally know people that uh, have lost their jobs. I mean, we're talking of about 22,000 from this company, Edcon. We're talking of uh, 6,000 here, 4,000. A lot of people are losing jobs. And I think this just throws us into despair. And we know maybe people that have suffered because of the pandemic, some we know personally. We know people that have passed on or passed away rather. And brothers and sisters, this all, when we look around us, it's just so much stressful. And we can choose again, it's all about choices. We can choose to be negative and distress about it. Or we can choose to be positive and be still knowing that the Lord our God is in control. We have chosen life in Christ. And by his grace, the kingdom. Uh, when Jesus Christ himself was walking on this earth, he too made a choice. He made the choice to save his father. He made the choice for the joy that was set before him. He chose to obey his father, our God. And this is what Paul tells us in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, and reading from the Message Bible. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on, it means we'd better get on with it, strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we are in. Study how he did it, because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God. He could put up with anything along the way, cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor, right alongside God. When you find yourself flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item that long litany of hostility he plowed through that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. And brothers and sisters, I think as we come to remember our Lord Jesus Christ, we too have choices, especially in these trying times, 
that we need to soldier on. And once again, the Lord God is telling us, today, I'm giving you a choice. You can choose life and success or death and disaster. The choice is ours, brothers and sisters. Amen.